Good morning, friends. Today we are going to discuss about uh, the second type that is aspergillus to be studied under the subdivision Ascomycotina. This is the systematic position of aspergillus. It belongs to kingdom Mycota, division Eumycota, subdivision Ascomycotina, class Ascomycetes, order Aspergillales, and family Aspergillaceae. Aspergillus, it is a widely distributed saprotrophic fungus thriving mainly on rotten fruits and vegetables, moist leather, decaying logs, starchy substances, fatty media and even on preserved products like jams and jellies. About 200 species are known uh, world over. Of this, 35 species are known from India. Most species are known only in their imperfect stage, that is the conidial stage. A few species show sexual reproduction and form uh, the ascocarps called as Clistothesia. Conidia of Aspergillus appears as smoky greenish patches and hence the fungus is commonly called as green mold. Vegetative body consists of profusely branched haploid mycelium. Hyphae are long, slender and septate forming several cells but each cell is multinucleate that means it is xenocytic. Sometimes the mycelium of Aspergillus transforms to sclerotium which is a rusting or dormant body formed by mass of tangled hardened mycelium. Now this, these are the figures which show the vegetative and the reproductive structures of Aspergillus. You can see the uh, highly branched septate mycelium from that uh, the uh, uh, asexual structures as well as the sexual structures are formed. In the second figure, you can see that each cell is multinucleate. The mycelium is septate, however, each cell is multinucleate. And you can also see the microphotographs of uh, the conidia which are formed on conidiophores. Now, regarding the reproduction, the vegetative reproduction is by most common means, that is fragmentation. The mycelium breaks into small pieces and each piece is capable of growing into a new mycelium. The asexual reproduction it takes place by the formation of conidia uh, on conidia force. Now, sexual reproduction, which is a rare phenomenon as far as aspergillus is concerned, occurs by means of specialized sex organs. Asexual reproduction, as I told you before, it uh, occurs by the formation of exogenous spores called as conidia. Conidia are also called as conidiospores. Now, these conidia, they are formed on vertically growing aerial hyphae called as conidiophores. Now, some cells of the young and vigorously growing prostate mycelium undergo enlargement and become thick walled and T shaped and are called as foot cells. Now, each foot cell then gives out an upright hyphal branch which is then called as conidiophore. The young conidiophore soon elongates and bears a terminal swelling which is called as vesicle or head. Now, the lumen of the vesicle is continuous with that of the rest of the, uh, rest of the conidiophore and the parent hypha. Into the vesicle cytoplasm, nuclei and cell organelles flow from the parent hyphae, thus making the vesicle multinucleate. The multinucleated conidiophore vesicle gives out numerous unicellular, radially arranged and tubular conidiogenous outgrowths called as pterygmata or phyllides, which cover the whole surface of the vesicle. The conidia may be produced either from the primary sterigmata or secondary sterigmata. Conidia are born in basipetal succession. Basipetal succession means uh, the older, older conidia, they form towards the tip and the younger ones are seen towards the base. Now, conidia are typically spherical or globose in shape. They are smooth at first but may become ornamented with small spines at maturity. Conidial wall is thick and it has three layers namely the outer epispore, middle mesospore and inner endospore. Separated conidia are dispersed by wind. 
So these are the figures showing the development of the conidia 4 and the conidia on them. You can see in the first uh, figure there is a T-shaped foot cell and from this foot cell a uh, vertical conidia 4 stalk is produced the tip of which starts swelling and uh, into this vesicle or uh, the head uh, you can see the formation of conidia on special structures called as sterigmata. Now the sterigmata uh, they can be either primary or they can be secondary. So this figure shows the formation of conidia 4 on the primary sterigmata as well as in the second figure it shows the formation of conidia on secondary sterigmata. So this is the uh, overall picture showing the development of conidia. You can see uh, the uh, formation of a food cell and the uh, uh, young conidia 4 forming from it. The tip swells and later the formation of uh, sterigmata and uh, the uh, conidia spores are released. So the mature conidium is somewhat spherical in shape and later becomes uh, uh, it shows uh, spiny structures on the surface. Now the sexual reproduction it is very rare and found only in few species. Sex organs are long and multicellular. Generally they remain coiled around each other. The male sex organ is called as antheridium or polynodium whereas the female sex organ is called as archicarp or ascogonium. Most species of Aspergillus are homothallic. The only known heterothallic species is Aspergillus heterothallicus. In homothallic species, the male and female sex organ, organs, uh, they, uh, they, uh, develop, uh, they develop close together on the same hypha or they develop separately on neighboring hypha of the same mycelium. Now regarding the sex organs, first let's discuss about archicarp. Archicarp or the ascogonium is a septate, multicellular and highly coiled hyphal branch. Its cells are xenocytic or multinucleate. A fully developed archicarp has three parts namely trichogyne, oogonium and stalk. Trichogonium is the highly elongated unicellular and multinucleate terminal part. Oogonium is the multicellular middle part and is the main body of the archicarps. Stock is the multicellular basal part. The trichogyne serves as the receptive part of archicarps and the oogonium functions as the female gametangium. Now the polynodium which is the male uh, sex organ is also called as antheridium which is also septate, multicellular, long and coiled. Its cells are also multinucleate. Polynodium spirally coils around the tightly coiled archicarp several times and finally arches over its apex. The terminal part of the polynodium comes in close contact with the trichogyne of the archicarps. Now fusion takes place and protoplasm and free nuclei freely flow from the antheridium to the trichogyne and then to the oogonium. Male and female nuclei come into close pairing and form dicaryons. Soon after nuclear pairing, the oogonial part of the ascogonium develops to form a fruit body called as ascocarp. Dicaryotic septate ascogenous hyphae develop from the oogonium. Along with them, sterile hyphae also arise from the base of the archicarps and grow upward to wrap around the ascogenous hyphae and this gives rise to the ascocarp later, which is spherical in shape and is called as cleistothecium. Now the ascogenous hyphae yield ascii from ultimate or penultimate cells, that means the terminal or the subterminal cell. And the development of the ascus we have already discussed during the uh, general characters of subdivision ascomycotin. So the, these are the figures showing the structure of anthridium and ascogonium. Anthridium is also called as polynodium and ascogonium is also called as archicarp. You can see the highly and tightly coiled ascogonium or the archicarp 
and uh, the uh, anthridium which is also uh, slightly coiled. This is how uh, the sexual reproduction takes place. You can see uh, in this cycle the formation of anthridium and ascogonium and uh, they come in tight contact by coiling and later they give rise to the formation of a spherical structure called as cleistothecium containing several assay and each assay carries ascospores. So these are the electron microscopic photographs showing the same and in here it is very clear that in the second the B figure you can see the trichogyne uh, that is the elongated structure which functions as the receptive structure to uh, get contents uh, from the polynodium and uh, in the figure G you can see the formation of a spherical structure called as cleistothecium. The last figures M, N, O and P they show the formation of uh, they show the formation of conidia so by asexual reproduction so this uh, overall this total figure shows the formation of uh, the ascospores as well as the formation of conidia now regarding the economic importance first let's discuss some useful aspects several species of aspergillus are employed in large scale cheese and fat production some species are source of antibiotics such as aspergillin, flavicin, geodin, patulin, astin, etc. Some species are used in the industrial production of organic acids such as citric acid and gluconic acid. Some species are important in the production of B-complex vitamins. Aspergillus niger can detect even small amounts of copper and hence it is used in bioassays. Culture of Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus oryzae yield several enzymes which are used in industrial fermentation. Now the harmful aspects, some species of Aspergillus are common contaminants of food items. Some species produce toxins called as mycotoxins which poison food stuff. Some species spoil cotton fabrics and leather articles. And some are pathogens which can cause diseases, uh, disease called as aspergillosis in humans and animals. Species like Aspergillus flowers, Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus fumigators are capable of bringing out this disease, aspergillosis. In humans, they cause another disease of ear called as otomycosis. Aspergillus niger often contaminates the bacterial and fungal cultures in laborate, laboratories and is commonly called as a laboratory weed. So this is the figure showing the uh, infection of lungs by Aspergillus and uh, this uh, infection of lungs is Aspergillosis. And uh, this is the infection of ear by Aspergillus called as automy automycosis. Thank you.